Hello and welcome to the new Audi Q2. It's the smallest and latest model to join the Audi Q range, but is it a compact SUV worth having? Well, let's find out. The Q2 is more distinctive in its styling compared to its other Audi Q siblings. It's all the better for it. It looks positively fantastic. You've got lots of sharp, angular lines, and like I say, it looks very good indeed. Okay, I will admit, the front grille does look a little bit cheap in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of it. But other than that, the overall package is very good. One design feature I really like is where how the belt line really tapers in and it goes all the way down here and it looks really sharp and dynamic. This is the S-Line model which means you get body colour bumpers, 18 inch wheels and a double exhaust for that sportier edge. Step inside the Q2 and you'll find an interior that's virtually the same as the A3 but that's by no means a bad thing. The dashboard is minimal and it's made of soft touch materials. Although having said that, work your way further down and you will find some harder plastics. The Q2 starts at £21,360 and this will give you the SE model. This will give you 16 inch alloys, 7 inch infotainment system, Bluetooth, air conditioning, cruise control and rear parking sensors or you can step up to the sport model which will give you automatic lights and wipers, navigation, 17 inch alloys or you can have the model I'm sat in which is the S line. So it's priced from just above £27,000 and it also gives you the features such as navigation, air conditioning and so forth but you get a sportier package so you get this lovely sport seats which are trimmed in leather and cloth. Well these ones are actually optional so they're trimmed in leather and Alcantara. I know, ooh, Alcantara, don't you know? But I have to say, it's very nice. You get stainless steel pedals and you get the exterior package as well. You also get the drive select as well, so you've got a choice of five driving modes, but if truth be told, you can also get that on the sport model as well. Now, you can have the Edition 1 model, which is limited edition, and it gives you a similar specification to the S-Line, but with more styling touches. Now at this point it's worth mentioning that there are quite a few optional extras on this model. Now I'm not going to go through all of them but one of the key ones is the technology pack. Now this includes the simply gorgeous Audi virtual cockpit. It's a 12.3 inch interface that replaces the traditional instrument clusters and I have to say it looks very slick indeed. The technology pack also gives you the bigger infotainment system, wireless phone charging and you also get the MMI touch which is quite a nice little gadget but it is quite an expensive option so I hope you sat down for this it is £1,595 but in all honesty I don't think I could spec a Q2 without it So getting comfortable in the front of the Audi is very easy indeed. These seats are rather nice and nice and supportive, but if you want the lumbar support, you will need to pay extra for that. Now in regards to getting a good driving position, that's very easy indeed. The steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach. Now the seat has got a good level of adjustment as well. Got plenty of headroom, but what's it like in the back? So a few people have said that the back of the Q2 is cramped for taller passengers and I have to be honest, I disagree. Now as always the driver's seat is positioned for myself and okay I haven't got aches of leg room but I wouldn't say it's cramped back here and the headroom isn't too bad either. Again I haven't got loads of it but I've certainly got enough to be getting on with and I'm six foot two so the back of the Q2 isn't too bad but there is a caveat with that. Now getting two adults in the back absolutely fine but this middle seat is rather narrow you've also got a big lump down here so there's not a lot of foot room and if I actually get into the middle seat like so so the middle seat is sat higher so my head is now touching the dark roof lining which makes it a little bit dingy in the back uh, I've got no leg room I haven't really got anywhere to put my feet and I'm not the fattest guy going but this middle seat is rather narrow and I wouldn't like to have two people sat either side of me. So I'm not broad, but I feel broad being sat in this seat. It is a rather slim seat. But like I say, getting two adults in the back and possibly a child in the middle, absolutely fine. Getting out of the car isn't easy. The door doesn't open that wide and the wheel arch is rather obtrusive. So it is a little bit of a faff, but it's not a deal breaker. The Q2 may be based on the A3, but you do get a bigger boot. So if I lift up the tailgate like so, you are looking at 405 litres and it's got a nice flat loading area. But if you want more space, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats to give you 1,050 litres. Now, this particular model has got the optional 
40, 20, 40 seats. So you can also fold down the middle seat as well. So if you want to feed through pieces of wood or even skis, you can do that as well to give you more flexibility. So in the Q2, there's a choice of five engines. So you've got two diesels and three petrols. So I've got the 1.4 litre petrol engine, turbocharged. It's also got something called cylinder on demand, which is quite clever. When you're cruising, cylinders two and three shut off to make the car more efficient. So this engine produces 148 brake horsepower with 250 newton meters of torque. It will hit 62 miles per hour in 8.5 seconds and the top speed is 131 miles per hour. And when you want it to be, it's nice and quiet, it's smooth, it's relaxed. But pop it in dynamic mode, put your foot down and you'll find it's actually quite a nippy engine. It will definitely get a move on. It's made to a 7-speed automatic S-Tronic gearbox. I have to say it's very good indeed. The changes are smooth. But again, in dynamic mode, it's nice and responsive. There is a slight niggle I have. At low revs, the gearbox can be a little bit slow to wake up, but that's a minor complaint. Once you get going, like I say, it's nice and smooth, and you don't really notice the changes. It is definitely a decent gearbox. But if you want to take control of the gearbox yourself, just simply pull one of the paddles, and away you go. You're in manual mode, so it's fourth gear, foot down, and pop into fifth, and the changes are very, very good indeed. Now the car is based on the A3, which means that you get decent handling. The steering has got a nice weight to it as well, but if you want it heavier, you can pop it in dynamic mode, and it makes the steering feel more chunky, and I really like that. The steering itself has been lifted from the Audi S3, and it's progressive, so the more you turn, the faster it gets. And the steering is most definitely direct as a result of this. So turn it in there like so, foot down, and as I said earlier, this car will get a move on, now if you want more power you can look at the 2 litre petrol engine which produces 187 horsepower, that's also made with Audi's infamous Quattro all wheel drive system, this is front wheel drive but it still offers plenty of grip and let's be honest how many SUVs are actually going to spend their time going off road especially in Audi. Now the ride in this car isn't fantastic, but it's not awful either. Now the S-Line model is available with sports suspension at no extra cost, which this car doesn't have, but even so the ride isn't perfect. Now I'm running the car on bigger 18 inch wheels and the ride is jiggly. It's not uncomfortable, it doesn't crash when you hit bumps, and when you do hit bumps it still soaks, it, soaks them up quite well, but it's definitely busy and it's definitely a little bit fidgety at times. But there is a positive side to this. This car handles pretty well. Okay, it's an SUV, so there is gonna be a little bit of body roll in the corners, but it's very composed in the corners. The grip is very good. Okay, it's not really gonna set your pulse racing, but it's definitely very, very competent. I would describe it as a German accountant. Very efficient, very good at his job, but you can't imagine him doing karaoke and getting drunk. But Audi will be bringing out an SQ2 for even more sportiness, and I do look forward to that. That would be something quite special. Oh, another Q2. Same colour. Good choice. Good choice, my friend. So the S-Line has got a choice of five driving modes, much like the Sport model. So you've got efficiency, boring. Comfort, boring. Auto, boring. Individual, eh, okay, a bit more like it and you've also got dynamic. Pop it in dynamic, the steering becomes heavier, the engine becomes more responsive, you can hear it a little bit more as well, and I have to say this engine makes a pretty decent noise. It has got a nice burble to it. The whole car just feels a lot more responsive, as you would expect it to. It hangs onto the gears a little bit longer as well, so it'll rev higher before it changes. You just need to poke the throttle and away you go. Visibility out the front and out the side of the car is pretty good, but I have to be honest, those seat pillars are rather thick, so they do create a bit of a blind spot, and reversing the car can be a little bit tricky. Thankfully, I've got rear parking sensors, so that helps, but I will say that the parking sensors are a little bit sensitive, to say the least. 
Now let's face it, the Q2 is going to have a fair amount of rivals, cars such as the Nissan Duke or the Renault Capture, but let's not forget this is a premium car. It's very nice inside and as a result you pay the price for it. So the Audi Q2 starts from around £21,000, well £21,360 to be precise. Now in regards to premium rivals, you could have a Mini Countryman, but that will cost you about a grand more, or you could have a BMW X1 or the Mercedes GLA, and they are about £5,000 more than the Q2, and in my opinion, I think this is the best looking out of that bunch. I think this is really sharp looking, it's a really good looking car. Now, Audi has designed it in a way that it will appeal to younger motorists, and I can definitely see that. It's got a good level of personalization, both inside and outside, but let's be honest, how many younger drivers are gonna be able to afford this car, even on finance? So in regards to a fuel economy, this car is running on bigger alloys, of course, so it is a little bit lower compared to the rest of the range, especially when you look at the diesel models as well. So on a combined run, you're looking at 52.3 miles to the gallon, and in my experience, I've been getting around 44 miles to the gallon, which is by no means awful, but if you want more economy, you can look at the 1.6 litre diesel. But what did I get in my experience? Well, whilst I had the car, I was getting a combined figure of 44 miles to the gallon, but that was in efficiency mode. Pop the car into dynamic and exploit the car's power, and that figure will quickly drop. Now, if you're looking at, at this model with a manual gearbox, then the fuel economy falls a little bit more, so it's below 50 miles to the gallon. So, that's another reason for having the S-Tronic better fuel economy. In regards to CO2 emissions, you're looking at 123 grams per kilometer, but if this car were riding on smaller wheels, then that would fall to 119 grams per kilometer. And if you had this car with the same engine, but on smaller wheels, then you'd be looking at 54.3 miles to the gallon. So you get a little bit more fuel economy, but because this has got bigger wheels, then you do have to pay a price for it, quite literally. So there we have it the new Audi Q2. Yes, it's not the cheapest compact SUV money can buy, but you know what they say, you get what you pay for, and in the case of the Q2, you are getting a pretty decent SUV. It looks good, it drives well, and it's a nice place to sit. And in all honesty, if I was on the market for a compact SUV, the Q2 would definitely be towards the top of my list. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more car obsession.